Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. This time we're gonna go more detailed into the sketching functions in Fusion 360. Now this is the object we got from the last video and it looks kind of okay and we just created our first object using a sketch. Now let's create a new sketch to get some more details. Let's click up here again to create sketch and now you can see that we have an object and we can select all the faces of, of the objects as well to create a sketch on, not just the three we saw the first time. So let's select this side face of the object we created earlier and click there to create an object. Now you can see that the object that we created is here visible in the background, but it is 2D obviously because we're looking at it from the side. Now this is also where the controls down here of the display settings come in. You can see that you can only see the one side and you can through, see through to all the edges. Now if you want to see the hidden edges, you can change it to sh shaded with hidden edges. And this will just show the hidden edges as well. But if you don't want this kind of grey stuff here, you can also just change it to wireframe, which will only show the edges. Just play around with it a little bit, what you like the most. and. Probably you're gonna be changing depending on what you need, but for the most time I have it in shaded with visible edges only, as this is the least confusing. Now let's run down the menu of different things you can do in Sketch. Last time we just created a two point rectangle here, which is the most basic shape and you're gonna use that a whole lot. So let's cover the line feature real quick first. It's very easy. You can access it either up here or by pressing L. It just allows you to create your own objects by going one by one and creating it that way. Very simple and you get used to it rather quickly. So here on the rectangle you saw that the basic two point rectangle, that's what we did the first time. You can also create a three point rectangle. And that allows you to do a rectangle that's kind of off axis. So let's choose that one and choose the first point. Then we choose the second point and with the third point we then create the rectangle. This is pretty straightforward. Um, I don't use that function very often, but if you want just a quick and dirty off axis rectangle, that's one way to do it. I'm just gonna get rid of this again. So we have an empty space. You can also create center rectangle which means that you choose the center point of your rectangle first and then you just go out and create your rectangle that way. Which is pretty straightforward as well. And you also can see a new style of line in Fusion now. And that are these orange dotted lines. And these, those are construction lines. You can toggle between construction line or normal line up here and construction lines basically are just there to help you see visually what's going on and also you can snap stuff to them but they aren't gonna be affected by the faces. You can see that when I highlight the faces here that these don't do anything. But when I select this and make it to a non-construction line you can see that it affects it. So let's get rid of this one again. And that's it for the rectangles. Let's go to the circles. I'm not gonna show you all of them because if I show you every option, then this tutorial is gonna take forever, but you can just like explore it yourself. You either have center and diameter circle, which is probably the one you're gonna use the most. You also have two point circle or three point circle, tangent circle and three tangent circle. Those basically are either you create two points and those make the circle, you can create a circle with three points. Tangent circle means that it, if you have a line and you want a circle that just barely touches this line, you can use this one. Or three tangent circle is if you want it to touch three different lines. I'm just gonna use center diameter circle. You click for the center and then you drag out after letting loose as with all the other functions in Fusion and then you can choose your diameter or you can type in a value, let's say 10. And then after you press enter the first time, you also gotta press enter a second time or click down. 
for to create the circle. And to move a circle, you can just grab it by the center point or by the outside. Doesn't really matter. But if you grab it by the center point, snapping into things is gonna be easier. Then when we go down to arc, you have different options. An arc basically is similar to a circle, except that it doesn't go fully around. One of the most used is the three point arc, where you select first for your start point, then your end point, and then you can select a point in the middle, which then creates a nice uniform arc. And then it also displays your center point of the arc. Like if it was a circle, that would be the center of it. You can also create a center point arc where you select that center point and then two points outside or a tangent arc. That's basically the same as with the circle. Then polygon is to create shapes that have more than four more than four corner points. And you can either have a circumscribed polygon, an inscribed polygon, which means if you have a circle, then you can be outside of the circle or inside of the circle. Or an edge polygon where you just define one edge and then you define the rest. So let's do a circumscribed polygon, select the center point and then go out and here you have two things that you can choose. You can one choose the diameter and then by pressing tab you can also switch over to how many corners you want. Let's say we want to make a octagon. So let's press 8 and then press tab again to choose the size and 10 again. Now the difference between inside of the circle and outside of the side of the circle means that in this case the diameter of 10 is going to be from the flat spot and in the other case it will be from the high spot. So let's choose that and then here is our octagon. There's also an option here for ellipse which basically is just like a circle except that it's not a circle. That's not mathematical explanation at all. My geometry teacher would kill me for that probably and you just select one thing first and then the other thing and that's how you create it. Most of this stuff is pretty easy to figure out and it also if you just let it sit on a point you can see here that it shows you what to do first. It says place center point then you click then it says place first axis point you click again and then the last point. So pretty straightforward. Now this slot function here is also rather useful if you want to make something that's just a slot but with like a nice rounded edge. One way to do that is just make a rectangle and then round over the corners or you can use this slot and you can just select the center point first then the end center point and then go out to create the size of your slot. That's just a bit of a quicker way to do that kind of stuff. But then one of the most confusing but also most useful things inside of sketching is the spline. So I'm gonna save that one for last but or I'm probably gonna make a whole separate tutorial about that one as it has quite some things that you have to get used to and know how to use but once you know how to use it, you're going to use the spline feature a lot. And I'm not going to go into all of them down here. Text is also really useful. You can just create text here. It is kind of a cumbersome interface. As you have to like change the height here, you can drag anything here. But you can turn it around and you have a whole bunch of fonts in here, which is nice and vanity. What's down here is more interesting again. That's not to create whole new things, but to change it. Fillet here is basically the same thing as with a 3D object a fillet. That means that you round over a corner. Let's first make a rectangle to easily demonstrate that. Then by checking fillet, you can, as soon as you get near a corner, 
it's gonna show here in red what it's gonna do. Then if you click down, it accepts it and with this arrow, you can choose how much you want to run over this corner. This is really nice for creating easy round corners. And you can see that it shows it here again and by double clicking, you can change it to whatever you want. By choosing the trim function, instead of deleting an entire object, you can just delete single parts of it. So let's say I want to keep most of this octagon, but I don't like this edge. So I can just use the trim function and delete this edge. And you're going to see that these two points show here. And that just means that it, this is a line that doesn't go anywhere. Then that is open here. And we could just, just use a rectangle and start from here. And then it would disappear because it goes somewhere. There's also the extent feature here where you can choose a line and then you click on it and then it allows you to extend this line. And it just creates like at a default length, but then you can choose, click on this and drag it out to however long you want this extended thing. Break is basically what it sounds like, just to break up a link. And then with sketch scale, you can select an entity. It doesn't scale the entire sketch as it might say seem like. You basically just select this entity and then you have to select a scale point. It's not going to automatically just scale it up around its center point. But instead either you have to create a center point to scale it around or what you usually can do is just select like the origin and then you can scale it from the origin here and scale it up and down however you want. And then click OK to confirm. The offset button here is Let's say you have this nice shape. You may even have a more difficult shape and then you just want to have the same shape inside just maybe a couple millimeters offset. So you cl click on this shape and then you see this red shape, which is going to be your new shape and you can offset it. It's going to take all the features. If you have like a difficult wavy line, it's going to take exactly that and that allow you to add kind of thickness to it. So let's choose this one and this gives you a nice added like a thickness, basically like a wall. Mirror is going to allow you to take in an object, let's say this line here and then mirror line, let's choose this line and then it mirrors this over. Now what you just saw here is that if you select object, it's only going to select one line. But what if you want the whole thing? Let's deselect this here again and start from scratch. Uh, if you hover over it, it's going to highlight whatever it's going to select later. And let's say you want to select the whole thing instead of just the line. So instead of just clicking on it once, you can double click it, which is going to select the entire loop. Then when you select the mirror line here, you can see that it mirrors the entire thing. Then press OK to confirm. You can also see all these little things appear here. And these are what's called constraints. They just basically say that this point here wasn't created here, but it is a mirror of this point over there. So if you, I'm just going to change this object over here, the object on the other side is also going to change. And if it turns dorky like that, then just go back a couple steps till it's back. To go back, by the way, is Control C. Then the last couple down here are circular pattern and rectangular patterns. These are very similar. They allow you to, to just model your thing once, and then if you want to have like a whole bunch of holes, you can just create it once and then pattern this hole everywhere. So with rectangular pattern, let's select this circle here. Then once you select this. Your object, which is the circle here, you don't have to select anything for directions necessarily. You can just say how many you want, let's say three here and then the distance. Let's make it distance of 10. Or maybe to space it out a bit better, let's make it 30. And then it creates three objects in the X direction and let's make it in the Y directions as well with 30 again.
and then you can see that this way you can easily create bigger patterns very fast. This one here in extend mode you specify the distance from the first point to the last center point. But if you want to instead define the distance between each one of them you can go to spacing. And in this case now it would change automatically to 15. And if I do 30 now you can see that it is spaced a lot further apart because each one has a spacing of fifth of 30 now. So let's go back to 15 and then click OK. And this created all these different objects. And they are still all linked to each other just like with the mirror thing, which is what you want in most cases. But if you didn't want this for some reason, you can see this constraint here and if you hover over it, it turns light blue and then you click on it and then now you selected the constraint and to remove the constraint just press the delete key and now this constraint is removed and you can move them all separately from each other. Be careful with that. Once you remove the constraint you can't just easily add it back on there. I'm gonna go in a different video more detail into all the constraints and how you add them. But Let's just only remove the constraints that you really don't want. In most of the cases they are probably good for you. And this video has turned way too long already. So I'm gonna go into detail on the spline in a different video and also cover the constraints in a future video. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and until the next video.